Hey guys, so I am finally back with part two of building the beaker cage and it's looking pretty much the same as we left it in part one. Slight changes I've made, I finally added on the substrate border after my drill had charged and I've also added on some wheels to the bottom so now it moves nice and easily across the floor. Everything else I've done for the cage so far has been done off camera because it's just been boring stuff. It's just been cutting wood and sanding wood and varnishing wood, stuff that takes time and just, uh, yeah, it's just unnecessary footage. But now I've got some fun stuff to work on. So this is one of the new shelves that I've cut out. This is going to be for the front right corner. As you can see, it's one of those interesting wibbly wobbly shapes that I like so much. We've got a hole here that I've cut out to fit iodine's food dish in and I've removed the corner because if you remember I did this with the zinc shelf unit and I have to say it worked so so well. He has not used that shelf as a toilet area so I'm really happy that worked because iodine also has an issue of using her shelves as toilets instead of just the toilet. So I removed the corner, I made sure it is big enough that she cannot get stuck in there, she will be able to easily climb up and down through there if she wants to. And right now this shelf doesn't really look that special, it just looks like another shelf, but we're gonna be making this look so, so cute. I have a little plan to make this into a garden and pond area, which sounds silly, I know. It will make sense as we go along. Okay, so after adding the colour and letting it dry, this is what it currently looks like. Now, it doesn't look like anything special right now. This is not the final result. Now, I have cut from a piece of thin perspex, this oval shape, and this fits around the pond section of the shelf. I shall be fixing it into place over the pond like that, so it's going to give the pond a nice reflective quality look just a little bit more light water also helps with wiping down the shelf and then to create a border around the outside of the pond I'm going to be siliconing down some rocks now these I picked up a long long time ago they are from outside I do have a video on my channel showing how to sterilize rocks from outside how to choose them from a safe place so if you want to get rocks for use in your cage you can go and check that video out It's looking good, it's going to plan, but it's still not quite finished yet. I obviously need to attach to the cage. It will be going in this corner and it will be level with the substrate board up here. But because of the rocks, it needs a little extra support. Normally I attach my shelves just simply by screwing them into the walls of the cage. This one is going to need a leg to support it. So I have that here, although uh, it needs a second coat of varnish. Even once the shelf has been joined to the cage, it is still not quite finished. I have another thing to do to it, and it involves something I worked on off camera. As you can see, I have two little wooden rainbows. Uh, they're just an arch of wood, which I painted with food coloring, and then put some clear varnish on top to give it a nice sheen. Doesn't that look lovely? And these two pieces, they actually go back to back like this. I will be using these to create, using uh, some, some wooden dowels as well, I'll be creating a rainbow bridge. So Iodine will have to climb all the way up the rungs of the rainbow bridge and on the second shelf that will be up in this top corner somewhere, the front of it 
is going to be this little cloud, which was a pain in the backside to cut out. I forget doing little detailed things like this with all the, the angles. It's, it, this is a real pain to cut, but totally worth it. How adorable is that? And how cute is it going to look when there's a little rainbow coming out of it and the rainbow goes into the little splash pool? It's going to look so cute! I'm so excited to see what this looks like when it's finished. It's an accidental sad face, oh no. So I have here uh, these two little picket fences with three pickets each and I also have a little arch. And I'm gonna take this arch and these picket fences and I'm going to create a cute entryway simply by flipping the picket fences over. And then I'm going to use a bit of PVA glue to glue the archway down onto the back. Blop there, blop there, and then just glue it down on the picket fence. Once it's finished drying, I intend to decorate it with some tissue flowers and give it a kind of romantic gardeny feel. So I've set that aside for a minute, and the next thing I'll be doing is gluing the rainbow bridge onto the cloud. Now, you guys haven't seen this for a little bit, but I have finally added the steps. The reason I didn't film this is because I had a few different failed attempts using different kinds of steps. Originally, I was going to use uh, dowels, round dowels to do this, and it just, it really didn't work out. So I settled on doing three little steps, which are in red, yellow, and blue, just on the edges. So we've still got that rainbowy vibe to it, and you can see what it looks like on the side. It is so cute. I am so happy with the way this turned out. By the way, these steps are just attached with PVA glue, so there's no nails and no screws going in from the sides, so nothing to ruin the lovely rainbow look. So once again, I'm gonna put a dollop of glue here, dollop of glue there, and actually I'm gonna put a bit of glue along that step as well, just for extra security. Stick it down, hopefully in the right place. And once again, I need to hold that in place for a moment while it sets, and then I can set it aside to dry fully for a couple of hours. Okay, I wasn't able to film the beginning of this because my camera was charging and I really don't have the time to wait, but this is what I've done so far. To make the flowers on the archway, I balled up tiny pieces of coloured kitchen tissue and stuck them down with PVA glue, and I'm just working on whoop, the top of the arch now. Start a work around there, and I'm going to continue going until the entire thing is covered and also you can see here I've used food colouring to create some vines on the lower parts of the fence. people who've been asking and wondering why this cage has taken me so long to do and so much longer than I originally anticipated, it's because of things like this. I thought it'd be really cute to have a stone brick pathway on one of the shelves, so for the last hour and a half I have been very carefully drawing out every single stone for the pathway and this is just the outline, this is just for me to, to add the colour to so I know where I'm putting it. ago I turned iodine's corner shelf into a donut and I was talking about this on Twitter I'm really happy with the way it's turned out but at the same time when I put it inside the cage 
it, it didn't really fit. I seem to have accidentally created a kind of woodland theme. I wasn't going for any theme in particular, uh, but that seems to be the way it's turned out. So I'm just going to stick with that. I'm going to keep making more woodlandy type things. And so I didn't want to get rid of this design because I think it's quite nice. I might use it in the future. You never know. So instead, on the other side, I've turned it into a mushroom. I just need to touch up the white parts because some of the red has leaked into them. So I'll do that, let it dry, and then we'll pop it into the cage. And over here we have the corner of death spikes. These are the place markers for some steps I have made that will lead up to the big mushroom shelf. If I can just push that back out the other side. <laughs> So I'm not sure if you guys see where I was going with this particular design. It's a little different for a stairway. But I was thinking, because the top shelf that it leads up to is, is a mushroom, that it kind of looked like the, the base, the stalk of the mushroom. It's a bit of an abstract piece. <sighs> Can you see what I was going for here? Yeah? Maybe. I don't think it looks too bad for an abstract mushroom shelf. I'm not sure just how well this is going to show up on camera, but you may be able to make out the faint outlines of two mushroom stalks and some grass at the base of each stalk. And these are here because my two smaller mushroom shells are going to be going here and another one just here. And those are going to be step ups to the big mushroom shelf as well as, of course, the abstract staircase. But I didn't want them to be just floating in midair, making no sense. So I thought I'd add some stalks to them. And there's also going to be another shelf along here. So the base of the mushroom stalk will be sat on that shelf, and then it will end at the top where the head of the mushroom will be. And there we have the base of our toadstools floating in midair for the time being. I've also drilled a couple of holes into the wall so that I can attach the shelves, the toadstool caps themselves. So uh, I guess that's the next thing to do. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. I really want to put up this other shelf tonight, but it's three in the morning and I really need to get off to bed. So I'm just going to show you guys what it will look like. Just as a sneak preview for tomorrow, uh, I'm going to pop this up onto some toilet roll tubes and then you'll get an idea of what the finished result of this section will look like. So there's a good idea of what it's going to look like when it's finished, once the shelf is attached to the wall. It is so cute. I love the little mushroom garden. And this space down here is going to be for some of Iodine's toys. Isn't that so cute? The little mushroom corner. Oh, I love it so much. You didn't think this shelf could get any cuter, did you? I honestly love this archway. It is just, oh, it's so cute. Can you just imagine Iodine sitting in there? Oh, it'd just be so sweet. I siliconed the archway down and I also created a little picket fence to go along the back wall there. Just because this back bit looked a bit plain, it felt like something was missing. So that should be the whole shelf finished. I can't think of anything else I want to do to it. The other thing I have added to the cage is just a plain and simple shelf up here. This is where the rainbow bridge will go up to. And I have one of her ramps from her old cage. I'm just going to fix it to place there. That goes down onto the stone path. So she'll be able to go up and onto the rainbow bridge, down into the splash pool and to the feeding area. my hands I have one of the door frames. These measure 75 by 41 centimeters and if I remember correctly they are 2.5 centimeters wide. I wanted to make these frames as thin as was reasonably possible because the thicker you make the door frames the heavier the door is and then it's more likely to kind of slouch on its hinges so I wanted to make it nice and lightweight. All I need to do now is varnish this so it's white and matches the cage and then I need to add the mesh to the back exactly the same way as I added the mesh to the sides of the cage. I'm just going to be stapling it down with my staple gun. John, what are you doing? It's the portal of dogs. Hello. I've got one more thing to do for the interior of the cage, but it is not finished yet. I have a feeling it's not going to be ready until tomorrow. So. We're just gonna crack on with the rest of it and hope for the best. Things number one and two that I have are the door frames. They are now white and looking beautiful. There is no mesh in them. Unfortunately, I don't have the mesh ready and there's no way I'm gonna have it ready before I want this video to go out. So you're gonna have to just imagine this mesh here. I'll put it in 
in a couple of days time after the video's gone out when I when I actually have the mesh. But you guys have seen me put mesh on things a billion times before. It's just stapling it down to nothing special. So we have the door frames and on the sides of the cage, I've already installed some large hinges on both sides. So it's just a simple case of attaching the doors using some screws. So there we are, that's the doors, just basic hinged double doors. Nothing really special about that. Now the way I'm building this cage, it's not technically going to have a roof on it because the top of this cage is going to be the Billy XL, which means I now need to add support beams for the Billy to sit on. Of course, if you were recreating this cage yourself, you'd probably want to build some kind of mesh lid for the top. So I have these planks of wood, which I've measured out to 150 centimeters, and I have four of them in total. I may, may consider doing a fifth, not quite sure about that yet. I have coloured the front piece white because this is going to be visible, but the other pieces will not be visible since they'll be under the Billy XL, so uh, I, it doesn't really matter to me what they look like. So I do think I'm going to add a fifth plank between the back two planks, but that's again something I will do off camera since I'm not going to be putting the Billy XL on the top of the cage in this particular video. I plan to do an entirely separate video for rebuilding the Billy XL cage. Uh, so you will see that, don't worry, you're not missing out on it. I've not yet screwed down the central plank because I need to add to the bottom of this the lighting for inside of her cage, which I need to find first. I have found it. These are the kind of lights I use for the inside of all my rodent cages. This is the 70... 75 centimeter long one and I believe it cost me about 17 euros. I think it's the biggest one that they do. Uh, I have not used this large one before but I have used these smaller and medium sizes. They all work great. This strip light is an LED one so while it gives off a lot of light it does not give off any heat so you don't have to worry about that. It also has no wires it just has this single battery pack which takes four AA batteries and it has just a simple on off switch down here. Uh, it has a little bracket that it sits on, you screw the black bracket into place and then you pop the light on and you screw the battery pack onto this bit with the batteries in and then it's good to go, it's very very easy. So this right here is the little bracket the light attaches to, I've screwed it into place with the screws that come with it and then you just pop it on, pops into place like that and then you take your little battery pack which I've already put four AA batteries in and you just screw it on and then LED light. So I'm just going to flip this now and attach it to the cage and it will provide plenty of lighting for the inside. I should add at this point, by the way, uh, the lighting is not for the hamster. Hamsters do not need light. They are crepuscular animals. They see best in low light. They have poor eyesight anyway. Um, but the lighting is purely for the fact that I film videos and I need my cages to be lit up so I can film in them because cameras require light to work. So that's why I use lights in my cages. Uh, they're totally optional if, if you want to use them or don't want to use them, but your hamster doesn't need it, so don't feel like it's a requirement. Now, if you keep in mind that the top of this cage is going to be completely covered by the Billy XL, so there will be no light coming in from the top, you can see that that LED is gonna make a huge difference when it comes to my filming cage tours and things like that. As I mentioned, there are a couple more things that still need to be done. We still need the mesh in the front of the doors. There needs to be one more panel of wood placed on the top to support the Billy XL. And I have one more shelf to go in the interior that's going to be uh, located about here. There is an adorable little bridge that I've made which will connect up to this part and uh, the, the little shelf here will help connect there as well so it's going to create a full circuit but if I wait to show you guys that this video is going to be another two three days because I'm not going to be here tomorrow so I figure we'll leave it where it is for now you get a really good idea of what the cage looks like and you're going to see the full thing set up and all when I post the official tour which will definitely be sometime this month I also would like to post a video of iodine exploring this cage for the first time so you're going to get to see more of this cage this won't be the last you see of it you'll get to see plenty more detail I love these little hamster faces, they are so, so cute. I'm so happy with the way this cage turned out. It is so much cuter than I ever imagined it would be. This is nothing like I pictured when I started building it. This is not the plan I had in mind. Most of the interior I just made up as I went along. So the fact that it's turned out looking so, so cute 
is just awesome. I cannot wait to move Iodine in here. I cannot wait to see her exploring it, having it all set up with all her new toys and just to see her in a new environment in a slightly larger cage. I think she's absolutely going to love it. I really hope you guys have enjoyed watching the progression of this cage. It did take a long time to build because I only had a couple of hours every day or so to put into it. Normally if I was working at this and only this every single day, I could probably build this in about a week quite easily, but it did take an entire month to build, so thank you so much for your patience. I hope you guys enjoy the final result of this cage as much as I do, and if you do, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up. You can also share this video with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I am well and truly in need of a rest now, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to bed, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.